The title of this morning's sermon is, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. And a quick side note, I had presbytery last week, so this is going to be a short, simple, sweet sermon, I hope. So I don't know about you, but at least once a day, at least once a day in my life, every day, I get hungry. <laughs> and I think uh, all of you can understand and relate, and maybe you too, at least once a day. Um, yeah, maybe twice a day, three times a day, four times a day, whatever. But isn't it, isn't it interesting, human beings that we are, uh, we get hungry and we need food to live. We need food, we need drink. Um, as the saying goes, you know, if you don't eat for a certain amount of days, you will die. And if you don't drink water for a certain amount of days, you will die. That's a fact. The stomach can growl. People get, what was it, hangry, okay? Not just hungry, but hangry, which is a combination of I'm hungry and I'm angry because I'm hungry. Uh, I think about going, uh, play basketball or exercising and then afterwards you're just so thirsty and then a cold cup of water or a nice uh, chug of Gatorade just does it so good if you can understand that you should be able to understand what Jesus is talking about here it's a really simple concept there is, there is earthly physical hunger and then there's a spiritual hunger a, an eternal hunger, a hunger that has to do with your soul, not your stomach, but your soul, your heart, your mind, and just who you are ultimately. As Christians, you should know this very well, we are to feed on Christ. Now, obviously, not literally, okay? So if this is your first time reading this text and you're seeing this stuff about, oh, I got to eat the flesh of Christ and drink his blood, yeah, that sounds very, like, it sounds like cannibalism, okay? And actually, if you read your Christian history, Christians were accused many times of being cannibalistic. Um, but those people just didn't know what we were really doing. They hear us talking about, yes, we got to feed off of Christ. We got to eat his flesh. We got to drink his blood. But that, of course, is metaphorical. If, after all, the hunger is spiritual and the satisfaction is spiritual, this bread and this cup, this bread and this drink, it's metaphorical, it's spiritual. We are to grow in Christ. And the way we grow in Christ is we feed on Him. Very simple point. So think about how many times you eat in a day. I'm a little old, so I used to eat like three, four times a day, like full meals. Now I can get by with two, <laughs> and I need to because I need to lose some weight here. But think about all the meals you eat in a day, plus like snacks, and then all the water that you chug. Um, you do that because you need to stay alive, or you need to grow, you need to stay healthy. But you need to understand this morning this very simple concept. The same goes for your spiritual well-being as Christians. When Jesus says, I am the bread of life, when Jesus says, eat my flesh, drink my blood, what he's saying is, dear Christian, dear church, you need to feed on me spiritually. You need to get more of me. So don't be confused. Like, we are fully satisfied in Christ. Nothing can change that. But this is a part of Christian life that is obvious. You need to keep feeding on Jesus. Not that we're not satisfied by Jesus. We are. But we need to keep on growing. We need to keep getting more and more healthy. We need to keep changing and, and being more like Jesus. Uh, that's the Christian life. In a nutshell and that's the main point that I want to I want to share with you this morning we hunger for Jesus spiritually we do and this is especially true as we you know deal with our sins as we 
come face to face with like relational problems with other people, as we um, learn about church more, how it works, as we um, just wait for Jesus in this old and fading earth, um, we're in a wilderness, are we not? And so we need the manna that comes from heaven. We are going through trials, are we not? And so we need to be like fed to get through these trials. Timothy, Timothy talks about how we are like farmers and athletes uh, and soldiers. Well, guess what? If you want to be a good farmer or a good athlete or a good soldier, you need, you need to eat. You need to drink. And you need to eat and drink the right stuff. Idolatry is eating and drinking the wrong stuff, the junk food of this world, spiritually speaking. And so while we are very good at eating and drinking so many other things other than Christ, as Christians, we ought, that ought to be reversed. For we are not eating and drinking primarily from things like, I don't know, just name it, love and romance, subcategory, Korean dramas, <laughs> dating. Instead of eating and drinking from success, money, those kinds of idolatries, why not Jesus first? And the list goes on and on. I don't want to spend too much time on that, but man, we, we hunger and we think we're hungry for like money and romance and all these things and none of these things are wrong in and of themselves, but what we really need is Jesus. I'm here to tell you that this morning. Let's be reminded of the truth today that Jesus is the bread of life. It's obvious that he's saying this very loud and clear. Jesus says, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. I am the one who gives you eternal life, resurrection life. Sadly, the people grumble. If you look in verse 42 and 42, yeah, just verse 42, they're like, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Don't we know him? He's just a regular human being. What's he talking about here? How can he say that he came down from heaven? They couldn't believe in Jesus. You do. Jesus goes on to talk about how he and the Father are one. He says in verse 44, 45, and 46, you can't come to me unless the Father draws you. The Father teaches and the people come to me. Only I have seen the Father. And so Jesus is making very loud and clear that this is the plan of salvation. I and the Father are one. We are at work to save you. And he continues to talk about this bread of life thing. Truly, truly, whoever believes in me has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Keep, keep following me and then I'll get to the main point. Uh, he goes on to talk about how, yes, your father's, of old, they ate the manna. Remember that story in Exodus? This bread literally fell down from heaven. It covered the ground like dew. They collected it and they were eating it every day. But those people that ate it died because that's not the ultimate spiritual bread that Jesus is. Jesus says, I am that living bread that came down from heaven. And the bread is my flesh. It's who I am. And then the, G and then the Jews were like, this guy's talking about cannibalism. And they were offended, they rejected Jesus, they grumbled. Ironically, just as the Israelites did in the old times, they grumbled. And Jesus finally caps it by saying in verses 54, 55, and 56, you need to eat my flesh, you need to drink my blood if you want to have eternal life. Now, for another sermon and another day, I would need to talk about all these very profound theological truths that come with this text. But here's the simple point. Do you, do you see what Jesus is doing here? He is making a very simple point. I am the bread of life, people. I'm so the bread of life. That manna is not the bread of life. I have come down from heaven to be this spiritual food, this spiritual drink. It's me. You need me, people. 
if Jesus is saying this in such a serious way, if he's so clear, even though it's metaphorical, if he is saying, you need this food, you need me, then that should, we should take that seriously. We should be, remember once again this morning that, oh my gosh, this is the best food. This is the food I need. It's Jesus' flesh. It's Jesus' blood. It's not the romance in my life. It's not the money that I can get. It's not the success or whatever. Fill in the blank. The idols that we think we hunger for. This is priority number one for us Christians. It's so simple. Because after all, what, is, what comes with this bread of life is the most important, greatest thing of all. Eternal life, resurrection life, being with Jesus. There's nothing better than that. And so personally, I, be, I was reminded as I prepared this sermon very quickly again because I had Presbytery, so. Do I hunger for Jesus as I hunger for Chick-fil-A and Chinese food and once in a while steak? <laughs> we all hunger for those things. We all thirst for things like just good fresh water or Coke with ice, <laughs> whatever is your favorite drink. And yet, it's so funny. I, I don't hunger and I don't thirst as I ought to for Jesus. That's not good. Dear Highland, dear church, brothers and sisters, let's feed on Jesus. Now, what does that actually mean? Okay, it's not cannibalism. <laughs> Uh, this is kind of the application part of the sermon now, and I'll be done. To feed on Christ looks like this. It's very simple. Read your Bible, pray, come to church and take part in the sacraments, which we haven't done in a while, but we're going to restart soon. The Lord's Supper, body and blood, bread and cup, hello. <laughs> That's how you feed off of Christ. There's no other way. Listening to Christian music, that is not feeding on Christ. It's, it, it may feel like it, but technically that's not the biblical way that you're fed. The way that you're literally fed spiritually is when you read the Bible on your own or when you hear the Bible read at church and then pastor explains it to you or when you're at Bible study and you're reading it together and you learn or you're at like family worship and you open the Bible, even if you're not going into in-depth what it means, just reading it, that is Jesus feeding you. Praise the Lord. When you pray, when you close your eyes or get on your knees, whether it's in the morning or at night, and you talk to God, you, you commune with Him, you have fellowship with Him, there is feeding going on there. You are feeding on the body and the blood of Jesus. And then obviously, when you take communion, Lord's Supper, when you look at the bread and you look at the cup and you are assured of the reality of Jesus' life and death and resurrection, when you're listening to the pastor explain what's going on, you're feeding. And the feeding is so real, it is as if you are eating that bread in the cup. That's the whole point of that, is to show how real this feeding is. Yeah, isn't that amazing? I just, I just realized this. Out of all the things that Jesus gives us, he gives us the Lord's Supper. That itself, with just baptism, Lord's Supper, he gives that to us. That itself should prove to us how important it is to hunger for Jesus and to know that this, this feeding on him is of highest importance. So think of Christian, Christian life this way. This is really a good summary of Christian life. What are we doing for the rest of our lives on earth? We got to keep feeding on him. You got to keep going to his restaurant. You got to keep ordering from not DoorDash, but Jesus Dash. I don't know. <laughs> Bible Dash or not Uber, but 
yeah, you come up with that, 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 that yeah, <laughs> the spoof there. But you get what I'm saying here? That's, and so no wonder if, it's not rocket science, okay? If you don't eat, you're going to die. If you don't eat Jesus, you're going to be malnourished. You're going to be weak. You're going to lack strength. You're not, you're gonna, you're not gonna be able to think. Jesus, he, he's our good shepherd. He, he, we're, the, we're his sheep and he knows what's best for us. And so when he says, feed on me, read the Bible, pray, come to church, take part in the sacraments, that's like, that's Christianity, that, that's Christian life at its most basic form. And if we do those things, you're gonna be really good. You're gonna come out fine. And so I don't wanna, you, those of you who know me, I'm not rebukey at all. I try to avoid that stuff as much as possible. Um, but I'll lovingly say this. Man, if, if you're not reading Bible or praying, you're killing yourself. What are you doing? Let's read our Bibles, let's pray, let's keep coming to church, and let's feed on Christ. Just like babies, what do they need to do? They need to eat, they need to drink, they need to rest by going to sleep, they need to poop, they need to get all that bad stuff out, and yeah, actually they need to play. They need to be with their parents, and they need to learn and grow their mind and think and develop as babies. Well, just like babies, we need to keep eating. We need to keep drinking. We need to go to sleep. We need to get rest, spiritual rest, the Lord's day. We need to poop. We need to poop all that sin out. Put away sin. And yes, we need to play. We need to smile before our God as we learn, as we grow, as we think and develop as God's children. Highland I'm just here to tell you, you need to feed on Jesus. You need this spiritual nourishment. So take part in his body. Take part in his blood. He's the bread of life. His body saves you. His blood saves you. And for the rest of our lives, let's keep feeding on him. In closing, I, I, I'm really convicted. This, it's pretty rare, but once in a while, sermons that I prepare, it challenges me to actually change things in our church. I think we need changes in our church so that we can read Bible more together, so we can pray more together. I confess, as, as your pastor, I've not been good at structuring those things in our ministries. Forgive me. We're going to be a church starting very soon, probably in a month or two, if not the beginning of next year. Uh, there will be times where we read the Bible and where we pray here at church. And I just ask that you keep coming, that you come, you participate. Um, we're going to read Bible more together. We're going to pray more together. We're going to do sacraments more together. We're going to bring that back definitely next year. This is going to be the core of our church because we are here to feed on Jesus. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your word this morning. A brief reminder, but a simple and profound reminder, God, that we need to feed on Jesus. And if we don't, we're spiritually um, starving ourselves. That's not good. God, I pray that if there's people in this room, if, 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 we, if there are church members who have been lacking in the body and the blood of Jesus, if we have not been reading our Bibles or praying, forgive us, God. But more than that, would you compel us? Would you um, help us to spur one another towards doing those things more, 
Help us to realize that that's the core of our Christian lives and that there's no substitute for good food for Jesus. And so, Jesus, we pray that you would give us a greater hunger and an appetite to feed on you, to read our Bibles, to pray more, and to do it together. Please give me wisdom as the pastor here to encourage, to facilitate, to add structure, to to teach and to encourage members to do just that. May this be a house. May this church be a place of Bible reading and prayer and sacraments. Thank you, Jesus, that you give us yourself as food to eat. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.